Ah! 
and, and the top project, five year project, um, we just write, well, after we identify a need, we write proposals. We also need to really pause, really pause, dealing with the food and livelihoods, uh, into greening the country, into environmental related issues. We are there, we are into health issues. Uh, uh, food, uh, uh, well, um, I say that. Then we are also into education. We very specifically go and we target. This we do it for mission. We go to places that are at end up. We get children from those places, and then we look for sponsors from outside, from within the church. Then we take those children to school, to our schools, and they get converted while they are there and then they take Adventist message into their homes. So we are very, very strategic. That's what we do. Um, where do we get our funding? Our funding does not come from the church. Our funding, as I've said, we do proposals and look for people. We get money from all kinds of men and women under the blue sky. Did you get what I said? Yeah. We get money from... Uh, they would be drunkards from Mataras, we don't know what they do, from uh, Alots, whatever, as long as they give us money. I want us to write a proposal, and when they get it, they give us. For your information, last year, we had a big promotion. We did it even on Hope Channel TV. We, we wanted to get some money for Lukana. They, our friends in Lukana were, you know, there was too much hunger there, more than any other place. They were more affected, because they, most of them live in places where they can go for two, three years without, they don't see a single group of rain for two to three years in some parts of the country. And we were there, we talked to members of our church in the whole country, seven day Adventist church members gave us five million changes with about, um, with about 200 bags of maize and about 50 bags of beans. Uh, we went to Bukana to do that intervention. But we had also written some proposals. So there is a church called the Mormons. Have you ever heard of a church called the Mormons? Yes. Yeah. They got our, our proposal live up in the air. They gave us 24 million to do, uh, to do the same uh, project. And this time they moved it to Kana and uh, we went to Kitui because Kitui was also worst hit at that time in part of my wedding. You move towards Mombasa. There was a big problem there. So the Mormons helped the Seventh day Adventist Church to do mission work. Well, I know it is not here. But if you have, you would have given a different answer. I'm saying, do you know the Mormons? How many of you know the Mormons? They are called Christ is a, a letter they say. Christ is Church of the Latter Day Saints, the Mormons. Yeah, they, they don't believe uh, in what we believe. There are many things they don't believe completely in what we believe. They gave us 24. When our own church, the church that Moses actually gave us 5 million, they gave us 24. <laughs> yeah. That tells you how poor we are performing especially in the arena of humanitarian work. Did you hear what I said? Now, do you remember the method of Jesus? The method of Jesus in doing mission work. And I, I had you guys are going for mission. So please listen to this. LMG White says that the method of Christ alone will succeed. The method of Christ alone. And what was this method? The method of Christ was this. He mingled with people. He desired to know their needs. He met their needs. He won their confidence. And then he begged them to follow me. That is the method of Christ. Did you hear what I said? Young people who are going out for mission, did you hear what I said? The method, you know, the method of Christ alone, alone, he went and mingled with people, desired to know their needs, 
he met their need. He wanted their confidence. He bid them come and follow him. As long as we do not meet their needs, we are not doing the method of Christ. And so what do we do sometimes when we go into those evangelistic events? The only thing is to identify a place, then we take them to engage fundamental beliefs. Our business is to tell them about the Bible. That is okay. And we must tell them about what the Bible says. But before you do that, you must desire to know that. So as you go, you, are, you do your recognizing mission. When you go there, are you listening? When you do your recognizing, you, you visit those places to see. Prepare. Can you identify a particular need in that particular place? A need that you can attend. It could be building a house for some of those elderly who may not be having houses. It could be doing cleaning. It could be if in a jigas you can do, you know, organize, get some money and buy some medication, get there and do that. When you do that thing, you I, those people you are going to meet you have to identify with you. And when you go and begin preaching about Jesus, they are ready to accept your message. Have I said that? That is what we are supposed to be doing. And so, our our say when you want to want to pay our our associates, they have so much money. There's a bag of food money in the bag. You you need to tell them. Tell them we need to get well. You know now when we are now when we are now when we are pay some money, you go for the car. The guy is in the car. Tell them what you have this project and tell them don't fear. Other side, we want you to send us money to the new one to identify our money to the new one 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 to the you guys, that is what we are supposed to be doing. Am I saying something? No, that's not what I'm preaching. I'm not there explaining to you what we do as a and challenging you so that you do it. And for those of you who are uh, here, I know in Africa, they roll and they sleep. We are going to buy an end of I should be arguing with Moja in a school here. I know that much. But as, as a people who have gone to school and we want to support the mission of God, this is what you can do. Just identify the mtoto wako kwa hiyo hiyo unaka. Ata ukapeleke tu hiyo day school. A day school, a fees is 20,000 shillings. Kwa mwaka mbima ya. Chukua huyo mtoto, muambia wale waze, ata huyo mtoto ata kapa nini mimi tasomesha ye. Haende kwa hiyo shule, akirubi nyumbani. Anaenda akirubi, unamuchemele, unamulia ye 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 biatu kidogo, unamuongelesha, unamuenrol kwa BOP. Uh, that is mission one. That's mission one. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. I got two girls in Muranga. I, I had gone to do some work for the Muranga or Kieta Majakos. I got two girls on the road. Satap was booing when we were going to a shule. So I said, because my mother was going to be a pastor. I said, I don't know how to say that. Satap, me. What is the uh, what is it? They are in a day school, your day school machine, you're a baby for a 
Nikamwambia pasta hii tunalipa. Yeye hakuna mchezo hii tunalipa. Kambia pasta wewe na kanisa yako mtanipia moja mimi nalipia mmoja direct. So nikampatia pesa hapa, akaenda kwa shule akadivote, akaongelesha kanisa, wakachukua kale kwa mshahara mwingine wakalipa. Those two girls, you know, the first meeting was you kwa barabara. They are they were angry guys. As we are talking right now by June we go me but it was there in the seven day at the city. Hatujafanya Bible study now. Hatujahubiria chochote. Watoto walienda nyumbani wakasema tumekutana na pastors ya second day wameamua kutulipia school fees. Mama yao anasema you mean wakatupigia masimu tuka confirm hao watoto tunasomesha mpaka form 4. Mama yao anawaambia akaambia watoto kenda kwa hiyo. Kwa sababu ya kwamba ni ya now Adventist. Mimi huyo mtoto nilimsalimia siku hiyo sijaenda hata kwa shule. I only sent school fees na natuma pesa kidogo naambia mpatie huyo mtoto anunue kidogo hata. That is powerful way of doing mission work. Are you getting it? And you know what God does? For every rich person living anywhere, anakuanga surrounded na masikini wengi sana. Hata hata katika town, ukienda town for every rich estate in Abuja na ka estate ka maskini kienda Nairobi kama pale kwetu tunakaa Lavington iko estate inaita Kawangwari yeah eh, that is what happens are you listening to me there is a una hii uh, eh Nairobi and Zaire Nairobi there is a una Mudaika next to Mudaika is which estate am doing nini there is Langata. Next to Langata is what? No. Kanan is not text next to Langata. Iko kitu hapo katikati. Langata iko mbali kidogo, mbele kidogo. Eh. Na next to Kanan there is another estate. Next to Kanan there is another estate. Hiyo estate ya watu wadogo inaitwaje? You guys are not in Nairobi. I'm talking to people kwenye hapo hapo ya Dole. Hapa hapa ya Dole tukwenu, hapa ya Dole tukwenu. West Indies, next to West Indies, tukukata, hapo nga hapa. And that's what, next to Mulimani, what do you call it? Elgonview, next to Elgonview is which one? That's a hamujui ya Elgonview, hamujui ya Elgonview. So, are you saying, what I'm saying is, we must be mission oriented. Let's be mission oriented. Hapo hapo are we happy when the body hapo tu kwenye unakaa kuna kamutu kameshindwa kabisa. Ile ndio mpaka ni kununua chakula. You may not have to go anywhere. Ni kumunulia tu ukifanya budget yako kwa mwezi eh, my brother na mrembo hapo umekaa naona huko zao mzee. So ukienda kufanya budget ina the end of the month wewe ya just 1000 budget ya 1000 hiyo ni unga paket moja e, ma, ya maandasi paket moja na mafuta lita moja na kasamuni kama pelekea huyo mama jirani mwambie baba we just thought of sharing blessing with you let me tell you you will, they will just come to church without you doing any bible study and that's what we call total member involvement are you getting me So in front of bad and now we are going to end up with your car and you show na mkoa for two weeks working on nana ndio wapate watano waleke kwa kanisa. Na wengi ni ile ya kubadilika wale walipoteza network wakaenda wanarudishwa kwa kanisa kwa njia hiyo. We cannot get new virgin souls by merely going to a crusade and preach. You can't. Ni mesema, ni mesema ni mesema. What about we go up a long time we come and have a crusade the what what you know what I'm talking about we will preach but at the end we only rebaptize whatever you want to protest and to work with you yeah but if you want to get in and and enter the areas you want to get virgin souls wale wana idea is be for the fact that wana kana ka dip how about how to get to get here in kutano yetu in kutano yetu inajulikana na wakalenjin na wakisi na wajaluo au ndio wanaelewa hiyo na hii kitu ya 28 fundamental beliefs lakini wale wengine ukitaka kupata waluya wangu waluya ya maraboli 
Na uende na hii 27 fundamental beliefs ya West Indies. Na ndoka Wale wanakujana na style. Am I saying something? Ukitaka kupata wale pokoti wale wachuu hapa bariki pale hapa. Au watu wengi na hiyo ndio stage for the of beliefs. Hapo unajibanga, hapo unapanga tu. Unaenda uangalie what is it that we can do like ungeenda mchimbe maji. Ah pale kwenye watu wanapigana pigana kwa sababu ya maji kidogo. Muende mufanye a project within that community. You get them they come in big numbers. Na hiyo ndio ilikuwa method of Jesus. Am I saying something? Yeah. So this is what uh, so the church came together and the two unions uh, came up appointed uh, some of us to help the church members to understand how to do Kilekinaita mission work the method of Christ alone. So that is what I do. And uh, what we are doing is now that kuna watu wengi wanasaidia kabisa kufanya mission tunauliza pia washiriki kama wanaweza partner members you can partner you can send as low as you can say i want to send my 500 shillings per month what about me kulimaliza na muna kazi unaweza sema i want to be giving even a thousand shillings per month 200 shillings if some of you who are students you can say even 100 shillings or 200 per month and it makes a big difference because we put it together and then we go get children mahali kuna peleka shule wana soma kuna kwa adventist we go there and do some mission. We may not go to preach, but we go there to attend to the needs of those people. When we do that, we are doing the mission of Christ. So, I want to share out those of you who feel you can partner with others in doing this mission work. That is beside what we are doing here. Na mkienda huko kama mtapata nyumba ya kujenga mnaweza nipikie pia hata na nyinyi nitoe kwa kitu kidogo. Yeah. Eh, unasikia ma? Yeah. Pigia mimi useme, "Bado unuko kwa ubiri siku hiyo tumepata kitu ka project hapa tunataka kufanya tumia sisi kwa kitu. Mimi nitakupa kitu nje." Umejika? Haya. So hii makaratasi, let me give to the deacons and deaconesses. Please just come and uh, share. It is just a uh, um you are not giving money today. It's just a commitment you will be giving as God blesses you. So I'm not asking for your money today. Um, you can share for the logo. You just say, you will have a kapukono, 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 you will become a donor. Yani wewe ni donor ya hatla kenya. So, tunachukua jina yako, tunaweka kwa, tunaweka jina yako kwa, kwa data base yet. We will be communicating to you on monthly basis. Uh, when you send any money, your money uh, utapata uh, reply automatic. Kwa hatla has received your money. Whatever uh, little it may be. And together, if we put it together as a church in Kenya, we can be able to do so much. Na hii karatasi hiko na same deal. Same ya mwisho, kuna karatasi kadoko and there is a perforation there, kuna makasi, eh, this small part. Ala madogo, utakapodiaza, this small part is what I will take. Utakapodiaza, kimaliza ibada, I will take this small one, hii kukwa unaiweka. Hiko na details, mpesa, pay bill, number ya adra, kikano kwa hita check, kuko na account, number, pale, uh, you can do electronic cash transfer, cash deposit, the that you check. And then you also indicate when you want or you wish to start making your contributions. That means you can say starting end of this month, starting next month, starting next year, and as, as the Lord will lead you, this is what you do. Then you will become our donor. Our Very good. Thank you. Thank um, you. May the Lord bless you so we can go to the world now. Our Father and our God, we thank you and we worship you. 
We give you glory and praises for giving us a chance to worship you. And we pray that your presence will be felt with us. More especially as we read your word. Oh Lord, we pray that you help us understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, those of you who may not receive those papers for whatever reason, because they may not be enough. If you cannot get it, don't worry. What you can do is you can take down my number and you just write to me an SMS and you tell me I want to be included on the list. Once you give me your number, once I see your SMS with your number, I know how I'll get all the other details and then we can continue. Is that okay? My number is uh, 0723. 0723-761-931. Those of you behind there who may not be able to get those papers, don't worry. As I've said, just get my number. Then you just do an SMS, just write, uh, I'm so and so, I need to be included on the list of donors. That is all you need. 0723 uh, 0723 Good. Thank you so much. Now we'll go to the work. Uh, last night we introduced our subject. You know, we are talking about reuniting, reconnecting. Sorry? Reunite, reconnect, and remember. Yeah, three things. That's what we're talking about. And, and the text that we have been given for this weekend is uh, 1 John chapter 4 um, and verse 9. Um, and, and the text simply says, uh, By this the love of God has been manifested. By this the love of God has been manifested. That's what the text says. That God sent his only begotten son. God sent his only begotten son. Um, that through him that we may live. So, so the true definition of life is because of the love of God. So we live because we are loved by God. Amen. We, we don't live because of anything. You see, my sister has just given up a heart moving a a testimony of how uh, her and the husband and the children would be a past tense by now, uh, just a few hours this morning. And here they are. It is not because they are strong, it is not because the root or not how ever no, it is just because the love of God was there to preserve them, and that is why they are alive today. Amen. 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 So, so we thank God and, and, and we say this concept of love is bigger. It's so big. It's so big. Bigger than what we can think. Yeah? It, it is great, man. It's great. In fact, it is so deep. It is so high. It is so wide. Hmm. La, la, la. La, la, la. understand what love is. Yeah. It makes it too complicated for us. But the Greeks had many different words for which love. So if you say, I love going to church, there is a name. If you say, I love going to play football, there is a name. And I love my wife, there is a name. I love my girlfriend or boyfriend, there is a name. I, I love my parents, I, I love my children. Every, every, uh, uh, concept of, of love towards somebody or something had its own uh, description. And as we saw yesterday, the Greeks had four kinds of loves. Four loves. Charles S. Lewis uh, has written a book called The Four Loves. 
And, and in this, he, he described how the Greeks came up with this form. He says, there is the agape love, agape love which is the love of God for man. It is unconditional. It, it is not love that looks at the face. It does not uh, depend, it does not base or consider the qualities of the one that is being loved. It is love that is, is, is unborrowed. It is unconditional for mankind. Yeah. And then, and then uh, according to, to Professor uh, Lewis, he said the other type of love is, is called the uh, eros, which is the highest form of love. This is intense. It, it, it is romantic, you know, love expressed between a husband and a wife. So, so then they would say eros. So, so if, 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 if I tell my wife, I love you, I would not say I agape you, I would say I eros you. I eros you. So, so that she knows that what I'm talking about is this kind of love. You get what I'm saying? Then there was this third love between, uh, that is between, uh, you know, man and, uh, or a woman and their children. So, so, or parents and their children. So that, that was called storge, storge, or storge, storge. This is a, a parental love. Uh, sometimes it is prohibitive. That, is, that means they may tell you, don't do this. They may deny you to do some things. It is because they are, it's a protective love. It's, it's love that does not want to see the children into pain. So sometimes they tell you, you tell them, this is what I want to say, no, 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 not now. And you feel bad why these parents are not doing it. It's because that love they have for you must of necessity protect you. And then if you have a parent who does not want to protect you by telling you no to what some of the things you want to do, it's because those parents do not have parental love for you. Yeah. This phileo love or filial love, which is just between friends. So, so you know, like uh, all of us are colleagues here, we are friends, you know. I'm a friend to my friend Willie, my sister Tekla, my brother John. We are friends. So filial love, filial love. And, we, and, and this is what I want to say this morning. These are the three kinds of love. Feel your love. Are you listening to me? Stoke love and eros are only meaningful in the context of agape love. In other words, anybody who has not consumed agape love, whatever they consider as love, is not existent. And that's why they will tell you, I love you today. They go tell another person, I love you tomorrow. They tell another person, I love you. It is because they, in any other errors, toge and filero, is inconsistent. It cannot be consistent as long as it is not based on agape love. It is agape love that provides the fodder, the ground for these three other loves to thrive. That's why I tell people, when a young man who has not accepted Jesus Christ approaches you and tells you, I love you, please, you better run away. They don't know what they are saying. And what they are saying, you don't know. So for that reason, do not sit there to listen. Because I can assure you, you will make a mistake. But it is not bad, because it is good to make a mistake and a suffer so that you can become wise. You will become a very good counsel. <laughs> you will just be offering free counseling services. Please don't do that. I tried and things did not work. Please don't. I'm telling you, you will make a mistake, you will suffer, you will become wise, but you will have suffered along the way. Yeah. If you, if you are a man and you are approaching a girl who has not accepted Jesus, she has not consumed agape love, and you tell her, I love you as a young man, I want to warn you in advance. Because you will offer free counseling services, and nobody will pay you. That's one point I wanted to say today. The second point that I want to say before I begin explaining what our text of today says is this. This 
love of God. is only demonstrated by giving away. Agape is not into receiving. Agape is into giving away. And, and that's why the, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Malaysia, but that he gave. There is, you know, you you can give without loving. You can. But you cannot love without giving. It is so natural. Agape love will always be demonstrable in terms of you are going out of your way to see that somebody else can be better than what they were. Have I said something? Praise the Lord. Amen. So now listen. So we go to the word now. Romans chapter 5. That's our text now. And our text says, uh, Romans chapter 5, are we there? In Romans chapter 5, verse 18. It says, my, my NIV says, consequently, uh, uh, the, the, this must be King James Version, it says, therefore. Now, you know, you know, in English, the word therefore signals conclusion of a matter. See, you English major. You know what I'm saying? I'm English literature major. You know what I'm saying? Therefore, they are simply saying, I am at the tail end of the story. There are, or this matter under conclusion, this is the summary. Consequently, because the entire Romans chapter 5 from verse 12 is talking about two men. Two men. It's talking about one man compared to or with another man. It is talking about what this one man did in comparison to what this other man did. Two men being compared. <coughs> and the title of my preaching is A Two One Act. A Two One Act Contrast. That's, that's the title. Um, a, A, then Two, One, Okay, you can write in words. A two, one, act, contrast. Hello? Uko nyuma? Pase, muna ni ipata? Kwa nyuma? Uko nyuma, muna ni ipata? Wale, wale wa chamu mekawa uko nyuma kwa kijabaya kiliti. Muna ni shika kwa? Are you kidding me? Ah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm talking about a two, a two wow. contrast. Very good. So, so from Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it is talking about Adam and the Christ. That's the comparison. What happened to us in Adam and what happened to us in Christ? That's the whole thing. Are we together, my friends? Hello? Be responsive. We are the same you, so that you need to go to the I don't know what to do when you go to the He's like in the I want us to move together. Are we together? Yes. Ah, very good. So, from, right from verse 12, so by the time he gets to verse 18 and 19, he's getting to the conclusion. And the conclusion is consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. So a two, one act contrast. Meaning, we, we are contrasting between a, one man and what they did. There is what Adam did that affects all of us. And there is what Christ did that affects all of us. Are we together? 
Yeah. You see, you see, there is one thing that Adam did, and that thing affects all of us. And there is that thing which Christ did that affects all of us. So there are some people who keep on complaining. Uh, you see, well, if God knew that uh, the devil would uh, come and do what he did, why did he destroy him? And then Allah said, if, if God knew that we will sit in Adam and get into the trouble we have, why did he allow us to be born? That's what they argue. But I always tell them, it's like you have not read the whole story. Why can't you read the whole story first? Because apart from what happened to us in, to us in Adam, there is what happened to us in Jesus Christ. So read the whole story, then now to see if you can complain. And I'm sure after this presentation, you will not ask that question again. Praise the Lord. Because here we are reading in 1 John chapter 4 that God demonstrated his love by sending his son. And the word send, the word send is not to tell somebody, go and do this for me. That's not what it means. The Greek word is apostello, which means send somebody away. It's like there is a rapture in a relationship and you tell them, go away. Just like Abraham send Hagar and Ishmael away. Send away. Send her away. This, this is the act of, of God disowning his only begotten son. He disowned him. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this is what we call a, a federal theology. In federal systems of government, you see what happens is uh, people choose uh, those who represent them. And then after choosing, those who represent them will speak on their behalf. And that's what we call federal theology. In federal theology, we see Adam, when God created all human beings in Adam, Adam became our representative. He spoke on our behalf. Everything he did, it was not one man. It was all men doing in one man. And so Jesus Christ, in the same federal theology, is not just one man. Whatever he was doing, we were doing it in him. So all of us are in, involved in him. And that's what I'm discussing in a little while from now. But I just want to view it. A two, one act contrast. So now, what happened? Let's, let's, let's look at the text again. Let's use that text. Let's use the King James Version that we have here. Um, just as the result of one trespass, so, one tra- who did this one trespass? It's Adam, right? One trespass, that one trespass was done by one man called Adam. Huh? <laughs> what has happened? Oh, this is the hideous man. Okay, therefore, as by the offense of one, that one is, uh, is Adam. The offense of one, uh, because of that offense of one man, Judgment came upon how many men? Oh. All men. Me, you, and those who will be born next year. All of them together. And then he says, even so, that is contrasting now, even so, by the righteousness of one man. Righteousness of who? Who is that? Christ. Christ. The righteousness of Christ. Through that gift, the free, uh, through that act of righteousness, the free gift. And, and that free gift, uh, uh, you will hear it unto justification. So it's the free gift of justification came unto all men. We are condemned in Adam. We are justified in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now let me, let me just explain this so that you can appreciate this. You know when God was creating Adam, he was not creating one man. In fact, the name Adam simply means mankind. That's what it means. He created all men, but in one man. No, 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 no. Let's, let's read it. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. When, when God was creating Adam, he did not create just one man. He created all 
men in one man. <laughs> look, look at it. And God has made, that is, and the heart has, is of course referring to God, and God has made of one blood, that is of Adam, all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Let me explain what this word means. That when God was creating Adam, he created you and me, and your children and your great-grandchildren. All of us, up to the last person that will be born, he created all of us at one time in Adam. Then he set and then determined the times of our habitations. In other words, the times of my birth. So he knew when, uh, as he created me, he set the time and the watch when Elijah Baham would be born. He set the watch when Delphine Mora would be conceived and be born, when Mogaga would be born. He, he set it when, when uh, Ch 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 Cheroma would be conceived and be born. He, he did that all at one time. And so when the, every time the time reaches, you come out. Because your time has arrived. But that is not the only thing. Look at that, he says, even the bounds of boundaries of their habitation, including where they will live. It's not, you are not here by mistake. No. You are not here in the Rift Valley, or you are not in Western, you are not in, in Central, by mistake, you are not in Nyanza. It was pre-appointed by God that uh, Elder Edwin Nyambare would be born in this year, and he would live in Kitana town, period. And when you come out, you can live at Eldoret, you can live in Nairobi, but finally you end up living where he had established. Are you listening to me? And so when we were in Adam, when Adam sinned, we sinned inside Adam. That is why all of us are sinners by virtue of the fact that we have come from Adam. We are not sinners because we have done bad things. You are a sinner ready made. Whether you do anything bad or you don't do anything evil, you are a sinner ready made. Because you are coming out of Adam. And the reason is, and this can be explained even biologically, by the way. Do you know that there are families with certain behaviors? And, uh, and by the way, when you want to get married, it's good also to know the family history of where you are married from. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Iko tabia ya ingine inakuwaka kwa damu. Kwa kina bibi ama kwa kina buwana yako inakuwata nanga nanga. That is why when you hear of a uyu ameza mapacha, si ati metrokia kiajani. Either of them anatoka kwa family ya mbalo kuna ile so, so that's what we are saying. Now, science has discovered kuna tabia kwa mfano watu wanaweza kuwa ni walevi, hiyo tabia inafuatana. Kuna watu wanaamini katika white beating. Na kuna wengine hawaishingi na mabwana zao. Yaani kwa hiyo familia ukiangalia mashangazi dada ya mama wote walitoroka kwa wao kwa hapo. Hiyo tabia inafuata pia na mke wako. Yeah. So, so, ukimoa, una, una elema ya kuwa, hii ni nimeoa, anaweza kuniacha. So, wacha ni chunge style. <laughs> very, very important. You need to know those things. Don't, kusiyeke kati kwa kwa kumeona sura. Atuwa wangi sura, uwa tunaoa mtu. Na huyu mtu halipo kwa sura, hako ndani ya sura. Kwa <laughs> mtu tunaoa. Yeah. Wala hatuwa hii mwili. Hii mwili, imebeba kitu, imebeba mtu, huyo mtu ndiyo tunawa. Hmm. Are you listening to me? So if science has proved that, and for that reason, it is also true now to see why the Bible says, through the offense of one man, all men became condemned. All men. One act, the offense of disobedience, all men are condemned. And so, we now, God finds a, a rough time. Mungu akapata kazi huu. How to save man? But now listen. The devil thought 
that because God has made a pronouncement, they say that when you eat of the fruit, you shall die. The devil thought that that time Adam will eat the fruit, the devil thought that God will come and stand and say, you are a God. That's what he told. But the devil was surprised. When instead of God coming to say, now we will go for all day, God decided to become man instead. We call it the science of incarnation. How God became man. That was a big shocker to the devil. He was shocked when God decided that I am going to take the human form and live with them so that I can be able to say, I'm going to be the head of a new human family. And so what God did when Jesus comes, you remember this man called Jesus, when he was conceived, Malachi like Aliyah, the angel told the, the mother in the past, you are going to conceive, you are going to conceive to bear a son, and the son will be called Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? Yes. What does God with that mean? No, no, no. But we cry, only the truth. Oh, God, God. Yeah. That's not what it means. Emmanuel means, this was, God with us means this, that God decided now to tabernacle in human flesh. He, he came, God came from heaven and formed a new body in the womb of men. Because that body was not a union of a sperm and an offer. That's a unique body. It was a new creation that was created in the womb of men. Otherwise, you explain to me how biologically you can have a body and there is no sperm and no egg. You tell me. Human is bringing the sperms, but uh, 20 million sperms fighting for one of them. It's not easy. It's a big war. It's a big war. <laughs> that is how our body is formed. But this body of Christ is different. It is unique. It is not just human 100%. It is beyond that. He is separated from sinners. And I need to get that very, very quickly. So, so God comes and then he forms a new body inside the womb of men. Then he comes out, and that body is God with us, meaning it is now, as you see Jesus, you are not just seeing one person, you are seeing all men in one body, God Jesus Christ. So then Jesus becomes the head of the new recreated human family. And because we have now been transferred from the first Adam and placed into the second Adam, because we sinned in Adam, now in Christ Jesus, whatever that happens to Jesus is also true to us in the same way what happened to Adam was true to us. So in Adam, we are condemned. In Jesus, we are justified. Praise the Lord. Now, one act of disobedience of Adam brings condemnation and death to all men. One act of obedience of Jesus brings justification to life for all men. Not for some men, for all men. And that's why I told you yesterday, because Christ died, God has prepared a place for every human being who has ever been created. And he wants to come and pick all of us to heaven. Whether you have accepted him or not coming to take all of us. The only problem is those of us who have not accepted him will not accept him to come anywhere closer to us. You will die, you will run away until you die while running. Has someone heard what I've said? Men will fly from his 
appearing in the glory. They will not want him to come anywhere closer. For that reason, they will, I don't know if they will hit themselves on the trees or on the rocks or whatever until they die. Rather than standing in the presence of a holy God whose glory is a consuming fire. The gift is for everyone, but not everyone would accept and appreciate. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why I have a problem with some young people who normally say, No, you know, I'm not a Christian, but I'm better than Christians. How, how can you be better? How, how can you be better? You know, you are in your own thinking. You are better than Christians because you do good things. Now, doing, good, doing bad things does not make you a sinner. You are a sinner. In fact, whether, uh, let me ask you, a quarter tree, quarter, do you have quarters on the cover? If that tree does not produce quarters, what is the name of that tree? Yeah. Even without fruits, it's a quarter tree. You are a sinner not because you've done anything wrong. You are. And your history of being a sinner like that, the end result of it is eternal death. The only way you can survive is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. And if we don't go to that level, whatever good you are doing is nonsense before the Lord. By the way, is it not Isaiah, the prophet, who says in Isaiah 64, verse 6? No, 66, verse 4. No, 64, verse 6. No, 66, verse 4. <laughs> is it not Isaiah who says that all our righteous works, 64, verse 6, I suppose, is it not he who says all our righteous, it is the prophet writing, He's not writing on behalf of sinners. He's writing when he is a prophet in the prophetic office and he says all the good things that we can ever do before the Lord is like filthy rats. You cannot on your own by your good works at all commend yourself before the Lord. Everything you do is nonsense. Even the good that you do is sin. But we all are of we but we are all as unclean things. And all our righteousness, that is our good doings, are as filthy rags. And what filth rags is very, very bad. If I if I explain what it is, some of you will have a problem eating your lunch. And our iniquities like the wind. What it simply means is that all our good deeds before the Lord is nothing. Now, I'll give you a little joy. There is a book she has written called Faith and the Works, page 24, paragraph 1. Anybody who has, please, I will allow you to open because you have those gadgets. Faith and the Works. If you have it on the gadgets, please open it up. Are you there? Are you there? So this one we have to read so that Museseme, we Muse and I will give you to I also have the app, so books, <coughs> steps to Christ, bring it over quickly. And why can't I get it? Anybody who is there? Uh -huh. Now, the, the, um, um, we are basically looking at, uh, <clears throat> allow me to get there also, because it is important. I don't want to say things. Uh, um, um, Twenty-four. Are you there? Page 20, where am 
mal. Which chapter is that? Is it chapter 2? Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Creature Mary. Have you seen that? The small topic and the creature Mary. Have you seen that? Read that. Yes, sir. I ask how can I present this matter as it is? Can, can you come and please give me my microphone? That is very, very important. How uh, LMG White is now writing. Yes, yes. Go ahead, my brother. How can I present this matter as it is? Uh -huh. How? Okay, three. Can you stand, my brother, so that uh, people can also see who is reading? Yes. I ask. Yes. How can I present this matter as it is? Uh -huh. The Lord Jesus imparts all the power, mm -hmm. all the grace, uh -huh. all the penitence, uh -huh. all the inclination, yes. all the pardon of sin, uh -huh. in presenting his righteousness yes. for man to grasp by living faith, uh -huh. which is also the gift of God. Yes. If you will gather together everything. Now listen, listen to that paragraph. If you gather, start a fresh there. If you gather, yes. If you would gather together everything that is good, everything that is good and holy, and holy, and noble, and the noble, and lovely, and the lovely in man, in man, that is in you and me, man and woman, in man, hey, hey. and then present the subject to the angels of God, and, and, and you need one of the angels and say, hey, many angels, Gabriel, Gabriel, yes, man. Look, look at this uh, good thing that these young people have done. They are noble, they are good, they are holy. All of those that men have done. And present them to the angel. Uh -huh. The angels of God are uh -huh. acting a part in the salvation of the human soul or in marriage. All those good things, noble, only, as acting an iota of salvation. That means, Kusanda ene mizuri yote yote umefati. Alafu, uambie malaika, hey, malaika, if you know that ene mizuri, minaenda kanisa, I eat the sabbath, I am, I have already, you know, stopped eating meat, I don't plait my hair, I sing in the church choir, and to present all these good things, by the way, all those things are good, and we must do them. Then after you come, come at all of them, and then you present to the angel, you say, Angel, these things can act some part in my salvation. Go ahead. The, pro okay, the proposition will be rejected as treason. Sit down, my brother. It is a treasonable offense. You cannot at all compare yourself with somebody who has accepted Jesus. And by the way, let me tell you, even if those who have accepted Jesus may appear weak, they may appear to have this fault here and there. You are not on the same footing even if you don't do anything bad. You need to get that. Praise the Lord. Amen. In Jesus, we have justification unto life. In Adam, we are condemned to death. Now that we have been transferred into Jesus, we better accept Jesus, remain in him, and remain in him, and remain in him. Because God sent him away. Romans chapter 8 puts it better. It says, he who did not spare his only son, in other words, he did not withhold him from us. He, he abandoned him. He, he, he left him. He, he sent him away. And then comes come and dies for us. It is because of his death. The higher demonstration of the life of God that you and I are living to be. When you talk about the love of God, you are not talking about sentimentalism. You are not talking about feelings. Talking about the heart of God towards sinners. He loves us so much that he, he abandoned his son so that he can accept you as his son. He abandoned his son so that you can be accepted as his daughter. So we take the position of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord.
But because Christ had never sinned, if he had committed any sin, even in thought, that would have ended him. If he died in love, he would have never resurrected. But because he never sinned, what happened was God brought him back to life. Now that we are children of God and Christ is his only begotten, therefore Christ becomes our elder brother. So Christ is my elder brother. He's my savior, but he's also my elder brother. Because God sent him away so that I could be accepted. Not because I was good, not because I'm better, not because I'm doing anything, but because he loved me. And that love is, is so deep that any sinner who has ever gone so deep in sin, that love of God is able to get them out of that sin. It is so high that this love is able to connect this sinner with the highest of the highest heavens, and that is God himself. It is so wide that it encompasses all men and women, regardless of. He does not care about the rest. He does not care about the, the, the rest. He does not care about the tribe. He does not care about your education. He does not care about how bad you may think you are. This love of God is able to encompass all of us. All of us. This is the love I present to you, my brothers and my sisters. The love that saves. Love that saves. I would like to pray with somebody this afternoon. I do not know your experience. I do not know what you are going through. I do not know how bad things can be. Some of us associate living in this place, you know very well, it's very challenging. Life out there is not like it is in here. Here, the University of Belgrade, outside there, we have another university. It's here alone in Mumba, Bosnia. The University of Hard Knocks. It is hard. It is possible for life to have carried you far off. Those of you who are here, the devil is not a specter of persons. It is possible that we are so deep and we think we may not even be assisted. I want to commend to you the love of God. And I want to pray with someone who says, God, here I give myself to you, Lord. Jesus, I give myself to you. I thank you for your love. May this love transform my life. And you are here. I want to pray with you. Stand up. I want to pray with you. If your hand is up, please just start, just start. I want to invite them by entering your body. Look at some of this. May this be a starting point. May this be a moment when you turn over a new leaf in your life. Edwin is going to pray for us, and I'll pray at the end. But as he does, I want to ask you to do one thing. Tell God what you want him to do for you. Everything is because of the depths of sin into which you have fallen. Tell him God. Tell him what you want him to do for you. 
And God is going to do it now, not tomorrow. It is now. For he says in the book of Mark 11, 24, whatever thing, whatsoever thing you pray, or you ask for your prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. So we are not praying that God will do it. We are praying that he does it now. And we must believe that he has done it. Elder, please come. Pray for us. Let's pray. Uh, thank you, dear God, for teaching us about your love to be here. The Lord, you expect us also, Lord, to relate you the way you say when you love us. That we are loved with God, so Lord, the standard is so high. But Lord, we know that all that you command us, you also enable us to do so. As associates, in one way or the other, Lord, we may have gone far away from you, Lord. You know us, you know our beginning, and even our end, Lord, we seek for forgiveness. That you are love, oh Lord, that is everlasting, we grow us closer to you. Throw us back, O oh Lord, through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord. We pray for those that are here, that are the students. We also ask, Lord, that if they give them strength, that they, when they are here, Lord, we also understand the true perspective of your will for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you for your minister that has ministered today, O oh Lord. Your word has touched our hearts, O oh Lord. We pray that you may grow us close to you. Closer to you, Lord, that Father, that Lord, even now when you restore your kingdom, we may be among those those that we inherit it. With our sincere prayer, Jesus. Name. Amen. Together with this, Lord, we how can we thank you? How, how can we appreciate you better? But that we can only hand ourselves over to you, O God. We surrender to you, we confess you that you are indeed our Lord and our Savior. And we commit our lives into your able hands, O oh God. And pray that you who is able to keep us from falling, that you will keep us from doing so. And when you will come in the clouds of heaven, you will present ourselves to yourself, O oh God. Glorious, without anything, any blot of sin, because you have confidence in your righteousness that is clean and clean. I thank you for each one of us, O oh God. We have realized how the love of God is what we need, is the reason for our living and being. We accept, O oh God, your love. We pray that you shed it in our hearts, and we pray that you transform us from glory to glory. I commit my brothers and my sisters and myself in your hands and pray for a new power, a new leave of life, that we may start walking in faith in the presence of our God, the God who clothes us with his righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for justification unto life, from condemnation to death. Thank you for reaching out to us and for saving us. And now, Lord, we thank you and we worship you. How I pray for my brother and my sister. Everyone that came in, oh God, they are not feeling well. Restore them. Those who are having challenges, probably broken relationships, they are listening to you. Sometimes the devil switches off their minds because they are, they are bitter, they are pained in heart. I pray for them, oh God, that you restore peace to their hearts. Those of us who are here in school struggling, some of them finances, relationships, and all those kind of challenges that they are going through, I pray that you set us free, oh God. Most importantly, prepare us for your soon return. Reconnect us, reunite us with your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.